Hello, Jesse Good here. Today we're taking a look at Lego Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire set, which is the rescue from the Mer people all the way back from 2005. Now this retailed for $20 in the United States with a total of five minifigures and 175 pieces. This was never before opened, at least the sealed bags weren't. Pouring everything out, we have our sealed bags as well as an instruction booklet with a nice looking advertisement we'll take a look at later. Here's the set all built up. Now let's take a look at those minifigures. I'll start with what was my favorite minifigure from the set back in the day, which was the Merman. This design just has a really interesting color combination with the dark red, dark green, and that gray. This face is so ugly that Brickling classifies it as an alien head. I just find that really funny. And the design of this hairpiece in dark red has come in some sets outside of this one. The mermaid tail has come in some sets outside of this one, but this was the first set back in 2005 to have it. I like the printing on the torso and on the tail piece and having this pike piece in this blue coloring is actually really good because it only comes in this set in that coloring if I'm not mistaken. For a second I was like, wasn't there a Knight's Kingdom set with it? And I'm like, no, I don't think so. Since we started with an antagonist, let's do the second and final antagonist, which is Victor Crumb. This design has that really interesting shark head piece. This blew my mind because I always thought it was just a molded head that goes over the neck piece, but this actually goes over a minifigure head piece. It's a mask piece, rather. The molded head is a design that they used for the Atlantis one from 2010. So this was almost like a prototype, but it makes more sense to have this as a mask piece because you still have Victor Crumb underneath and he has a hair piece to cover up his head once you remove that mask piece. Victor Crumb has a face print that also appears in the Durmstrang ship and a torso print that's exclusive to this set. Unfortunately, they're all one-sided and there's no printing at the back. The Harry Potter minifigure is exclusive for his face and torso print, a face having the gills from the gillweed, the torso print having that nice design for the swimsuit, and you can look at the back of the torso as he falls off because of his flippers. There's a printing that says Potter for his team. And for his alternate face print, he has a confident smile. Here is Ron. And yeah, if you're just too good hardcore fan, you might know which design this is. I think it was on my worst remakes video. But this is the one where both face prints look horrendous. So this is just him awake. And then this is him asleep. <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't know. <laughs> Hermione's is not much better. <laughs> this design is just hilariously bad. You can see this alternate face right here where, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's something with the eyes or the lips. And for the front facial printing, I guess it fits the scene. But still. <laughs> There's three separate builds to this set. These two are actually together, and then there's this one and this one. And you'll notice with this set that there's a lot of pieces in some unusual colors. I really like getting this doorway piece that's used in some older LEGO Harry Potter sets in this nice dark green coloring. I like getting these pillar pieces in a dark green as well. And the design of this actually has those two sections. Starting with the smaller section, I like the translucent green flame piece where outside of the set that has appeared in a Mars mission set as well as a lot of diver sets from the late 90s. This section right here has a secret on the top step. Lifting this whole top step out reveals these two knives inside this small structure which you could access those knives even easier by pushing the brick back. Harry does use these in the movie scene and I really like the chrome design of these. And right after the top step, we have a small platform that's on a hinge connection that you can move up and down. Don't know why it's there, and also don't know what's going on with the octopus there, but I like the extra details with these translucent blue bricks at the side, and how well that part fits into place. There's nothing that it's blocking underneath, but if you just want to look with that whole top section removed, again, Nothing too much there. But I do like getting those medium blue bricks. That's a color I don't see too often. And for the back section here, it's where we have Hermione and Ron. Once again, I like getting this piece in that dark green. I like getting this piece in the translucent green. And the whole play feature to release Hermione and Ron from being held under sea. All you have to do is push down on this contraption at the back. 
<laughs> and they fly off. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> All they do is fit back into place with those Technic pins. And that's it because the mechanism is just the plate that goes underneath there. So when you push down on it, it brings them upward. I do like the general rustic style of the C4 that they have going on around the contraption. And all the way at the top, there's another very nice piece, which is this translucent blue chef's hat. And Lego SpongeBob fans like myself may have thought that jellyfish were first used with this translucent chef hat idea in the SpongeBob line. But nope, this came out in 2005, one year before any of the SpongeBob sets. That was just something interesting to me while building this. Keep in mind in the movie there's more people under sea captive with Gabrielle and Cho, but only two spaces are included with this set with Hermione and Ron. And to accompany that main build, there's a side build of another section. And this is a neat section to add on, which has its own play feature. All you have to do is press on this back axle and the red scorpion goes launching. And I say scorpion in red because that's the piece that this originally was for, but I think they were going for a lobster here, which is actually a pretty neat design and a color for this piece that we don't usually get. As for the paddle boat, I can't help but feel disappointed because everything else in this set has such a unique color scheme or build to it. This is just very basic and it's an oversea item while everything is under the sea. I don't know. To me, this is definitely the worst build of the set. Back to the box of the set. First off, rest in peace Kmart. And at the back, there is actually an interesting little alternate build. And you can see it right in the corner. And to me, it looks like the Mer People's Eating Challenge or something like that. <laughs> or maybe even a quiz show. Look how they have like a translucent blue brick as a buzzer. I really miss Lego putting these alternate builds at the backs of the boxes. As for the instructions, there's actually an interesting ad at the back. I've never seen this ad before because I haven't reviewed any Goblet of Fire sets on this channel before, but I do love this Hungarian Horntail set. I had it when I was younger, but now it's all in pieces. So I don't know if I could actually review that without buying it again. Then there's the Durmstrang ship, which I bought rather recently. I've kept sealed to this day. Probably gonna review it in August at this point. At the bottom is the Graveyard Duel, which is the one Goblet of Fire set I don't own, unless you count the Target exclusive of the Durmstrang ship. Either way, the Graveyard Duel is a fantastic looking set that I've always wanted, but I was satisfied with last year's version, even though that was a lot smaller. And then I'm glad to finally have the Mer People set. So overall, Rescue from the Mer People is one of my favorite old LEGO Harry Potter sets. The design is so unique, not only in the sense that it's never been remade, but the color scheme they have here is just an interesting mix. I also love the minifigures they have with a lot of them being over detailed for 2005, but that was just kind of a trend going on around that time. With everything together, it does feel like it was a great deal for $20 back then. And I do hope that we get this remade someday. And it could be really cool if they just expanded it a bit because I think all the problems with this set come with how small it is. But as a small set, it's still a winner. So that's it for now. Hope you guys could find this set for cheap since it goes for very expensive prices on eBay. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.